What's going on guys? My name is Christopher and welcome to It's Complicated, the show where I talk about and showcase wristwatches. So if you love watches like I do, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button, then click on the bell and you'll be all set. Today I'm going to be showcasing a Spinnaker Croft Automatic. Here we go. All right, here we are checking out the Spinnaker Croft 5058. It's an automatic. I'm gonna take it out of the box here. You know, the box is decent. Pretty much just, if you can hear this, fancy cardboard there. And there's the watch. Comes on a nice little pillow here. Came with a hang tag, some plastic wrap on the watch, and what I thought were instructions, but just ended up being some advertising for Spinnaker. All right, so here's the watch. Now this watch was made after Robert Croft, who was the first person to dive to a depth of 200 feet. He did that in 1967. Price tag, this watch is gonna run you $320. Let's talk about the size, 43 millimeter case, 22 millimeter lug width, and 14 and a half millimeters thick. So pretty thick, pretty bulky, especially when you count in the 51 millimeters from lug to lug. Let's talk about the movement, which you can see there. This movement is an automatic Japanese Miyota subdial 8218. The second hand is in the 430 position. The movement features a 40 hour power reserve. And while it does hand wind, it does not hack. It beats at 21,000 beats per hour, and it does feature a date as well. This movement can be found in many micro watch brands. So how does it keep time? Well, let's talk about that. The first measure I did was negative 14 seconds a day, but the next measure I did was only at negative four seconds a day, and the last measure I took, the watch was running at plus five seconds a day. And of course, if I took longer measures, that plus five seconds and negative four seconds would only come out to be plus one second if I did that over two days. So not bad timekeeping. This watch has a water resistance of 150 meters or 500 feet. Now let's talk about the watch's case. I'm quoting Spinnaker on this one, but it's made from a marine grade stainless steel. It has a nice lightly brushed look to it. You can see it has the Spinnaker writing on the left side there. Let's talk about the bezel. It has a 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel. The bezel has a coined edge. And the bezel click is really nice, nice and tight. And I love that it has the brushed aluminum on the bezel insert as well. I do love the font on the numbers here, but I found myself wondering why leave out the 30 marker? Perhaps to match the loomed pips lack of a numbering? Maybe I'm overthinking it. Either way, I think it seems a little weird. Let's talk about the crystal. The crystal is made from sapphire, and from what I can tell, it does not have any AR coating, which I think is a good thing since the AR coatings typically scratch with heavy wear. Also, it has a small bubble there to magnify the date. Nice touch. I appreciate that it's not exactly like a Rolex Cyclops. It's not exactly trying to be that with the flat top and the flat bottom. It's just a nice little bubble. Gives it a little bit of extra charm, in my opinion. Let's talk about the crown. Pretty standard, easy to pull out, and like I said, it does hand wind and easy to screw back in as well. Here's the back of the case. Nice display back there. You can see the movement just chugging along. And around the display back, it says all stainless steel, water resistant, 150 meters, Japan automatic, sapphire. And then it has the watch's reference number, which in this case is SP. 5058. Although it's not the full reference number, this one is an SP505801. Pretty sure the 01 is just the color code on this watch. Let's talk about the dial and the hands. This dial is interesting. I love the offset second hand running at the 430 position. I do like the hour markers. They seem perfectly aligned, nice and big, easy to read. Definitely has a nice vintage look to it. Has that sunburst kind of blue going on. Here's something that bugs me a bit. You see the automatic written there? Now under that, you can barely even read it. It does say 150 feet slash 500 M, but it's so hard to read. I just wonder why they decided to put that on there so unlegible. Maybe that's just them trying to go along with the vintage look of this watch, or perhaps it's just something missed in quality control. Now let's talk about the hands. Not my favorite thing about this watch, but again, probably going for that vintage look. Just not a lot going on with them. The second hand might be my favorite part about this watch because it does have a different texture. 
than the rest of the dial. Just gives it a nice pop. But I think the minute and the hour hands, I think they could have been maybe a little thinner and I think I would have appreciated them more. But hey, that's just an opinion. I can see someone liking the fat simplicity of these hands as well. This watch is using Super Luminova, and here is a shot of that lume in action. Very nice, very even. No bracelet on this one. It just has a really thick leather strap. Really thick, really durable, especially when it's buckled. When it's brand new, it's really hard to unbuckle to really grab that and just unbuckle it. But when it's on the wrist, it feels very secure, very nice. And I do love the darkened blue of this leather strap as well, and I do appreciate the stitching there. A little bit there, a little there, and of course there. The buckle is something I'm not really a fan of. I much would have preferred a deployant clasp instead of a buckle. And there's the Spinnaker Croft on my wrist. It looks pretty cool. It has that nice vintage look and pretty chunky, especially with that 51 millimeter from lug to lug size there. So if you like big chunky watches, you're probably really going to like this Spinnaker Croft. And that's the showcase, folks. Pretty cool watch, 320 bucks. I would have liked to see a deployant clasp. And of course, I did not like the writing under automatic, very hard to read. Other than that, pretty cool watch, great loom, decent timekeeping, nice job. So leave a comment, let me know what you think. And that wraps up another episode of It's Complicated. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, like this video, share it with all your friends, and I'll see you next time on another episode of It's Complicated.